Hi, since I skipped a lot of this setup in my previous video on procedural bevel, I am going to make this a more detailed one on how you can set up the whole system. Also, I am going to show you some more tips and tricks how you can clean up your final mesh. We are going to go through how to set up your boolean geometry, how to set up a procedural bevel, how to add custom edges to bevels, getting rid of end guns, and in the end, who needs bevels anyway, right? So the final tip is how to remove bevels. All right, so I managed to find the old file and let's go through the setup. So it's actually very simple. I just made box and then I use transform to move it. But these days we don't need it because they added these parameters in here. So you can actually do it right on your box node. And then I made uh, another box, and same thing, and plugged it into a boolean, so I get this shape. And now I used uh, this bevel node, fixed distance, round, to get this shape. Same thing on the other side, just, just a box, plugged into a boolean, so we get this shape. And now you can do edits to, to modify your shape. And then you get, and then you make uh, the bevel to, to have your procedural bevel. So now if I, if I just move the boxes, same thing, maybe I just need to disable this one. So this is how I set up uh, the procedural bevel. I can just modify it. Well, you know what, maybe let's try disable this. I think we don't need it anymore. Uh, I think it was introduced in Houdini 17. So thank you side effects makes our life much more easier and now I'm going to show you how you can set it up from scratch. Let's start by pressing C, go to create and let's create a box, enter. Now we have this box in here. You can manipulate the shape. Now let's uh, switch this to creating context. Same thing, C and just create a box. Put it somewhere. Let's position it a bit. Now let's rotate it. And let's put the boolean, just plug it in, one, two, and let's make a subtract, and there you have it, simple little shape, now you can manipulate it, like this. Go to your handle or press rotate, move, uh, transform, rotate. You can manipulate it and we can make uh, another box. Right, because we have this turned on, it creates it in our, no in our network. Okay. Same thing, just a boolean. And we can do whatever we want. So maybe I don't know, union, just for the fun. Just move it. Make a bevel note. 
change it, change it to ground, add some distance, and now you don't see any errors because we have all like sharp edges, but if I would go in here, and just select some edges and bevel them like I did before. Polygons, poly bevel. Now just change the distance, get uh, round, add some subdivisions, and now you can see that we get very incorrect behavior. So I need to ignore flat edges, put something like 45 degrees. All right, uh, not on this one, on this one. And now we get a correct behavior. And depending on your preferences, you can also turn up turn on vertex splits. You can see it right here, depending what you like. Yeah, this, this makes maybe a little bit more cleaner geometry, but I like the shape more. So I'm gonna keep it as it is. And now, right, so you have your procedural bevel. Everything works, it's perfect. But you get this really ugly normals and n-gons. So what you can do is you can use a polyductor node and I, it should automatically have like a turn this option on so it makes um, quads from your end guns but still the normals are ugly so you can just use a normal node and change it to face area and maybe you can dial it down or more Depends how you like it, and this is your shape, which looks much better now. now this is without, wait, without with. Maybe you can also try to increase the subdivisions. This also helps a little bit. Polydactor doesn't seem to recognize this. Alright, so another way to uh, quadrangulate your angles is the following. Just create a re attribute wrangle node. And now we're going to group the, the angles. So, run on primitives. Group and the group name will be endgons and it's equal to and I found this on the forum. Just use this line of code. And now you should see a group called endgons with some endgons. And you can use the divide node. Make it four and just on the end guns or maybe, you know better yet we can use a split now just to show you that it actually really group the end guns so just split the end guns if you invert the selection now you see only quads and triangles so these are incriminated and guns. So now you have all divided properly. Maybe you can try this. Nah, doesn't help. Alright, and uh, now we'll just use the normal. And there you have it.
doesn't there's your shape all right and then this section i'm going to show you how you can clean up your mesh a bit and how you can add your custom edge selection okay first of all let's add an edge loop over here two loops now let's use a poly split let's press Q to repeat the command enter to finish it oh no we could have added okay let's do this again here here in here and in here Q2 clean it up in here as well enter all right this should be good enough and now let's make our custom edge selection so first we need a group node we don't want at all we just want edges and we want to group by edge angle now let's put some high value and let's press uh, this handle so we can see what we're selecting all right and this looks good enough so mm, you know what maybe just for the sake of demonstration we can add also some bevels in here so we see more clear clearly what's happening Right. And and now you see see what we're selecting. See as I lower the threshold, it selects the more flatter areas. So we wanna put this at a decent angle. All right. So this is what we have. And now if we use the the bevel node. Let's call this group. Let's call this group uh, bevels. Now we use the bevels group. Um, as you can see, you get this. It's only the um, the edges that we selected in our group. But maybe you want to have a more cleaner mesh and select also this edge. So what you can do is you can create another group node. Set this, copy the name. And, uh, set it to edges and this is very important. Need to set it to union union when existing so it will combine these two selections if you want subtract you can obviously use subtract or intersect it's up to you but i want union and i want to add, add these edges to the selection and also these ones and these two I, as you can see I have them in my group so they're beveled as well so we get a more cleaner mesh as in comparison to what we would have over here so this is the one without our custom selection and this is with the custom selection okay maybe maybe this one so it's the same I can also put something higher so that's the difference this might come handy in in some situations and we can finish off by 
um, tidying up our normals and getting rid of the handguns. So one and two. And as you can see in these areas, it's, it looks a little bit cleaner. Right. Just up the divisions a bit. So as you can see, this I get a nice bevel in here. It's a bit messy. All right, so to get rid of this weird looking shape, you might want to use disable allow vertex splits. So this one looks much better. So final comparison, a bit better in these areas. When you want to get rid of your bevels, you can use the fuse sub, which will just merge together close vertices. So, I don't know, might be helpful. And you can do it by just by creating fuse sub and then playing with the distance now, until you get something that is satisfactory yeah something like this now just a final thought uh, this this adding custom clean it up and adding custom edges isn't very procedural so you might want to leave it as as the last step because now you see you can do a little bit like move it up and down maybe back and forth a bit but once you, you know push it too much or change the topology too much like it falls down whereas with the one before we can move it as much as we like just make sure you don't get weird shapes but it still works so, yeah, just a warning for you. Alright, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.